power to pilot, come in for a landing, go and wash up for dinner. <laughs> come on, Ross, wash up. You know I've got a dinner guest coming. Yeah, a lady. Yeah, a lady. Is it all right with you if I have a dinner guest? Gee, if you wanted a dinner guest so bad, why didn't you invite Uncle Benny? Because he's too short. <laughs> I trip over him every time we dance. <laughs> Stop worrying about me and go and wash up, huh? I can't help it if I worry about you. After all, you don't know too much about women. <laughs> and you do, I suppose. Well, after all, I've stayed single all my life. <laughs> it's real true. Look, Miss Curtis is a friend of mine. I'm not getting married. Who's getting married? Nobody's getting married. Oh. Oh. Six. Mm. Kid. What? Just remind me, got a letter from your Uncle Tanoose. Another one? Mm-hmm. That's special delivery. So I see. I'll get that. Wait a minute. Come back here. That's Miss Curtis. Now listen to me, both of you. I don't want any trouble with you. We're just good friends. Lovely girl. We've been out together a few times. That's all there is to it. She's not out to hook me. <laughs> so if either of you make any cracks like wedding cake is fattening or the apartment is just big enough for our little family or any kind of cracks that also help me, I'll fire the two of you. You can't fire me. I'm in the family. <laughs> My lawyer will find me a loophole. <laughs> and you go to the kitchen and cook. All right, stop mumbling. All right. <laughs> Well, if it isn't the beautiful but unsuspecting victim herself. What? <laughs> Glad you're here. Nice to be here. Good. Sit down. Thank you. Look, Peggy, I, I hope you don't mind our having dinner here tonight, but with my daughter away, I don't like for Rusty to have to eat alone. I understand, Danny. Besides, I'm anxious to meet the little boy. Look, uh, I'd like to straighten you out on one thing. In this family, I'm considered the little boy. <laughs> As a matter of fact, my children act like they did the pacing in the hospital while the doctor delivered me. <laughs> I mean, where women are concerned, they figure every girl I meet is out to hook me. And of course, they have to protect me because I'm so ignorant and so innocent. So if they start making any cracks, you just pay no attention to them. They? I thought you said Terry was away. Well, Louise, our maid, has, a, has an agreement with my daughter. She turns in an absentee ballot for her. <laughs> well, at least you can't feel neglected. <clears throat> Anything but. Actually, I get it in two directions. Louise and the children are afraid I'm going to get married. My uncle Tanoose is afraid I'm not going to get married. Tanoose? <laughs> yeah, he's kind of the self-appointed matchmaker in the Williams family. Every other week, I get a letter from him asking if I'm married yet. Matter of fact, I got a special delivery from him today. Don't even have to open it. I know what's in it. My darling nephew, are you married yet? It's no good for young men to be without wife. It's like dog without fleas. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to keep him moving. Your loving Uncle Tanus. Tanus is such an odd name. It's Lebanese, means Anthony. What a man he is. Big, strong, indestructible, 60 some odd years young. He sounds fascinating. I'd like to meet him. Oh, you'd love him, you really would. But. Unfortunately, Peggy, tonight you're going to have to face the other side of the family, the anti-daddy getting married group. Well, if I'd known I was going to be in hot water tonight, I'd have worn my galoshes. <laughs> Speaking of hot water, here comes bucket number one. <laughs> uh, Russ, uh, I, I want you to meet a friend of mine, Miss Curtis. Uh, this is my son, Rusty. Hello, Rusty. Hi, you're kind of pretty. <laughs> my father snores. <laughs> Curtis is not interested in whether or not I snore. Maybe not now, but when she is, it may be too late. <laughs> well, Rusty, if I ever become interested, I'll get in touch with you, and I hope you'll give me the benefit of your, of your experience and advice. Oh, sure, sure, anytime. Thank you very much, Rusty. Hey, she's okay, Daddy. I like her. Well, thanks loads, but I saw her first. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <coughs> Looks like you've won half the battle. And here's the other half. <laughs> this is Louise, who cooks better than she snoops, but not much better. <laughs> this is Miss Curtis. Uh, how do you do, Hello, ma'am? Louise. <laughs> it's okay, Louise. Well, all right, if you say so. 
Would you please excuse me? I've got to get back to my roast. I was so busy snooping, I let down on my basting. <laughs> <laughs> well, looks like you've scored a complete victory. My son and my cook now belong to you. You make it sound like I should be decorated for bravery under fire. Matter of fact, I shall recommend you for the Silver Star with two mink clusters. Thank you, sir. At ease, Corporal. The war is over. There'll be nobody else saving me from you for the rest of the night, so you can just relax. Well, I'm glad of that. Come on. Uh, <laughs> Well, I mean, what are you doing in New York? Oh, I got a wonderful surprise for you. What kind of a surprise? What do you mean? Ah. <laughs> Diane, this sheriff, huh? Your sheriff, your new wife. <laughs> Sheriff, say hello, Daniel, your new husband. Uh. <laughs> what are you talking about? You didn't get my letter? The one with special blue stamp on it? Cost 20 cents extra? <laughs> yeah, I, I got it, but I haven't gotten around to reading it yet. You didn't read it? Oh, well, it's very simple. You see, I say to myself, my nephew, Daniel, whom I love, is <laughs> <laughs> still young man, needs wife. Good, strong, healthy wife. Then I see my four cousin Selim's little skinny daughter grow up be big, fine woman. I say myself, oh ho, there is wife for Daniel. <laughs> also, she comes with very good dowry, you know. Huh? Oh, dowry in all country. When wife comes, she bring maybe four goats, six sheep, even camel. But I make Selim give market price in cash. Only I take out 20 cents for blue stamp for this. <laughs> it's a good deal, no? Come along, it's a good deal. Uh, huh? Yes, see, Sheriff? Look, Peggy, I said you'd been in your last bucket of water, but I was mistaken. I'd like to have you meet Lake Michigan, my Uncle Tanus. Miss <laughs> Curtis, my dinner guest for the evening. I'm Hello. very happy to meet you. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> nice, Daniel, nice. But skinny. <laughs> He just has a great sense of humor, honestly. He's, he's joking. He's always joking. He's got to be joking. I mean, you know what I mean? Tell me, you, you seriously brought that woman all the way from Toledo for me to marry. Sheriff, I brought her by bus. <laughs> so strong she is. You know, outside Pittsburgh, the bus have flat tires. <laughs> we don't have jack. Sheriff get up, she hold our bus, while driver change tire. <laughs> oh, come on now. Was easy. Bus was only half full. <laughs> oh, she's being ridiculous, honey. It's not ridiculous. This is real woman. Danny, <laughs> perhaps we'd better make it another night. No, but think, please don't be upset. I mean, I invited you to dinner, and I want you to have dinner with us. I mean... <laughs> Suddenly, I, I have no appetite at all. Oh, that's why you're skinny. I you mean, you. <laughs> No man in the world ever had more respect for his uncle than I have for you, and I love you, but shut up! <laughs> Excuse me. Look, Peggy, I, I want you to stay now. Don't be ridiculous. Oh, ho, that's the reason. This is the one. Daniel, this is no wife, you skinny. Look at this. This is no wife. Why don't you stop no. fooling around? Come on, Sheriff, lift him up. Oh, don't be ridiculous. No, no. Peggy, I'm just... Lift him up! <laughs> Uncle, you stop pushing me around. Strong like ox. And what a cook. Cook. Can you make baklava? Can you make baklava? <laughs> Sheriff, I make baklava. Melts in your mouth. Sometimes even is melting on way to mouth. <laughs> Messy, but delicious. <laughs> also, she runs tractor. She good bricklayer. Can build chicken house. Digs wet. You ever build chicken house? You call that wife is no wife. This is why. I'd better leave. Peggy, please, listen. I, I can explain. Yeah. Uncle Tanoos! Rasta! Oh, smile. Hey, your mustache tickles. 
Yeah, it's supposed to tickle. Yeah. <laughs> Rusty, fine boy. Rusty, meet Sherife, your father's new wife. What? Peggy, hey, listen, I, I can explain. Look. Danny, please excuse me. This is embarrassing for all of us. Good night. Well, uh, at least, l let me drive you home. Dinner, sir. Oh, so I'm <laughs> Yeah, this sheriff. Oh, <laughs> oh, I know Mr. Williams is happy to see you. Yeah. Wanna bet? <laughs> it's a very good thing I come. You see the way he ran after that girl? Yeah. Oh, that bad. But in old country, for man to chase woman is like cow milking farmer. <laughs> come on, we all eat. Louise, you wonderful cook. Thank you. Tell me, you married? <laughs> now, wait a minute. Don't you go find me nobody. I mean, <laughs> all right on my very own. Land sake, Uncle Tanus, if you're so marriage minded, why ain't you got a wife? Oh, Tanus got no time to get married. Anyway, who won old man for husband? Old woman. <laughs> but who won old woman? <laughs> now you got a problem. You're not an old Uncle Tanus. Daddy always says you got it more pep than any six young men he knows. Of course, that's true. I only make joke. I say I old. I got strength of bull. Oh, plenty good years left in Tanus yet, huh? Hey, Sharifa, what's good dinner? Are you like? <laughs> Sharifa don't talk much. She make fine wife. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Danielle, too bad you missed wonderful dinner. You take Skinny Lady home? <laughs> yeah, I took her home. Good, now you forget her. You start thinking about Sherife. You'll be very happy man. Yeah. Uh, take the lady in the next room. Maybe she'd like to watch television or something. Huh? Daddy, I want to stay with Uncle Tanus. Take her into the living room like I tell you. Okay. Come on, Mother. <laughs> I think maybe you mad on Uncle Tanus, no? Mad on Uncle Tanus, yes. Look, Ami Tanus, I've always had a great respect for you because, well, you exemplify the, the strength and courage of my ancestors. And I've been proud of you because you, you were old world. But I never re realized how, how completely old world. This is America. And to a modern American, a wife is a lot more than somebody who bears children and cooks the meals and cleans the house and washes clothes. Oh, you're right. If she fast worker, she also plows field. Amit Anus, a wife is a friend, a companion, someone with whom you share your problems and your pleasures. But you, with your old world attitude, you choose a wife like you'd buy a cow. If it's strong and healthy, that's a good wife. <laughs> who cares if you love her or she loves you? When man buys cow, it's not important if cow is affectionate. <laughs> I'm talking about women, not cow. Women, you understand? People. Well, make up your mind. First you say women, now you say people. <laughs> That's what I mean. Look, you're a church-going man, aren't you? Sure I go, if not raining. <laughs> <laughs> what I mean is... You've always considered yourself a, a kindly, honest man, haven't you? Sure, I consider. I mean, you would never persecute anyone because of a different race or a different religion. No, never. Then tell me, why is it you take half the population of the world, the female half, and inflict upon it the worst kind of bigotry and intolerance? Me? I do that? Yeah, you, you do that. That girl, Sharifi, that you brought here. Did you ever once consider that she might not want to marry a man she doesn't know? Well, of course you didn't. You just decided I'd make a good husband for her. You make a deal with her father and you bring her to New York. What's going on inside of her? Is she frightened? Is she unhappy? Maybe she loves a boy in Toledo. Did you ask her? Worse yet, did you ever think of asking her? No, I, I, I didn't. It's wrong, huh? Yeah, Ami is wrong. 
wrong the way you treated Miss Curtis, too. Calling her skinny and making a spectacle of yourself. For the first time in my life, I'm, I'm ashamed of you. You made me very unhappy. I, I make you unhappy? make you unhappy, I make big mistake. I stupid old man. Oh, no, honey, don't no, say No, no, I stupid old man. Look, I, I don't want you to feel bad. I love you. And I... I love you too, Daniel, but still, I, I stupid old man. I'm so old, I don't even realize I'm in a new country, like you say. I, up here, I, I'm still in old country. I, well, I foolish old man. I, I think I do good for nephew I love, but I, I do wrong. I no use to the world anymore. When man is no more use, he's dead man, and I, I all dead man. Will you stop talking like that? You're not I old at all. I lay down now because when old man dead, he get very tired. Uncle Tanus. I mean, Tanus, you're uh, taking this all Tomorrow morning, I get up, we go back to Lido tomorrow. Listen, you're not old. Maybe I didn't... better I don't even wake up. I know you to old. Old man, old dead man. Look, I apologize. I'm sorry I said what I said, but you're not old. Now, don't talk like that. Gosh, Daddy, how'd Uncle Tanus get so old all of a sudden? <laughs> Russ, uh, take what's her name up and show her to Terry's room, will you? I want to know. Will you please take her upstairs? Okay. Come on, Mother. Don't say that! <laughs> Morning, Daddy. Morning, sweetheart. Get Uncle Tanus up for breakfast, will you? Uncle Tanus? Oh, he went out. Went out? Yeah, about an hour ago. Hmm. How was he? I mean, how'd he look? Even older than last night. <laughs> oh, me. I wonder where he went. Peggy. Aww. I'm making a mess. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna leave you now to talk with lady. I get my things together, I go back to Lido now. Peggy, how did my uncle, uh, uh, Russ, uh, do me a favor, son, uh, go, go, go upstairs, will you? Well, I just came down, though. Well, go up and wash your hands and face. I already have. Well, then go up and wash your ears. Well, why? You never let me hear anything anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you caught us so disheveled like this. Sit down, won't you? Yeah, that's quite all right. Thank you. Well, what's going on? Well, all I know is your uncle came to my apartment this morning. How did he find your apartment? I don't know. He must have found your address book. Huh? Anyway, he begged me to come here with him. And I just couldn't refuse. He seemed so frightened and old. Yeah, I know. It's awful. And I did it to him. You did? Yeah, me and my big mouth. You saw him last night. He was a bull with the strength of a dozen young men. I had to go preach to him. I practically broke him in half. Oh, I mean, you're carrying this too far now. No, no, I repaired what I broken, and now I go back to Lido, live out remaining years of my life. Sheriff, Will you stop Angel? talking like that, please? I all, I all clock. Has run down. My old river has dried up. My old knife lose its handle. I'm old dead man. Sheriff, come, we go back to Lido. You're not an old man. <laughs> Sheriff, we go back to Lido. What's the matter? You're smiling. You happy go back to Lido? You're not sad I don't get you, my nephew Daniel, for fine young husband like I promised?
You like some other fellow? In Toledo? See, Daniel, how old I am? You're right again. She does. She loves some young fellow in Toledo. You really love somebody in Toledo? I know him. So who? <laughs> Me, but, but I old man. You mean you want for husband to news? Fine young woman like you? <laughs> well, why not? I strong like bull. <laughs> well, you won't marry with the news, eh? Why you won't marry with the news? Well, from the very first moment you when I... You talk too much. Come on. <laughs> You may pick a bag. <laughs> well, better luck next time, Daniel. <laughs> I tell you what I do. I send you a lot of goat cheese so you can fatten up, skinny lady. <laughs> Wonderful man. Of course! <laughs> Hans in the family. <laughs> what would you like for breakfast? Of course, God cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Pratt cheated out of our dinner date last night. I'm glad we can at least have breakfast together. I am too. Meeting your Uncle Tanoose was an interesting experience, but not very nourishing. <laughs> Louise, hurry up with the food, will you? I'm hurrying. Ain't got but two hands, you know. You're gonna be a regular female Rochester. <laughs> <laughs> I'm famished. So am I. Done yet! <laughs> <laughs> I come back because I got wonderful idea. No, instead of Sharif and me going back to Lido, we come back here and we all have double wedding with you and Skinny Lady, huh? Stop with the Skinny Lady stuff No, already. it's a wonderful idea. Uncle Tanus, it's just that, well, Danny and I are just friends. Yeah, we hardly know each other. Now, look, she nice lady, you're nice fella, you like each other. All right, you're married, what's the matter? Oh, come on, now, listen, it's best thing for you. You get married, you have children, you get over being skinny. I mean, I I don't think I'll wait for breakfast. Peggy, please, wait a minute. Peg, listen. Every time you open your mouth, I lose a meal. <laughs> Hi. This is a picture of St. Jude Hospital, Memphis, Tennessee. It is supported by an organization known as ALSAC, A-L-S-A-C. And I am proud to be president of that organization. ALSAC means aiding leukemia-stricken American children. The members of my organization and I have pledged ourselves to do everything we possibly can to help fight this dreaded killer of children, leukemia. Thank you.